today's video is gonna be a little different than my norm uh but i'm gonna be honest with you some things has been weighing on my heart for the last couple weeks and i just can't go any longer without sharing some stuff with y'all um you know i know everybody enjoys seeing the cooking and everything and i enjoy doing it i do i do but i feel like today um i want to talk to y'all a little bit about what could be coming for us here in the united so, states so as you all know um things are a little different uh right now than they have been in the past now granted we did go through something you know back 2008 2009 we did but i don't think we have seen it to the magnitude that this is about to come to i think a head has been festering for a while and it's about to bust <laughs> and put it to put it in the least so uh today i want to talk to y'all about some things you can do to get prepared because let's face it um you know if i'm wrong if i'm the way i look at it if i'm wrong well that's fine i got this extra stuff i can use it okay but if those others are wrong that are living blindly saying oh everything's gonna be all right everything's gonna be all right you know going to the grocery store every other day everything's gonna be all right all oh, they didn't have this today that's fine all oh, they didn't have that day is fine you know not changing anything those are the folks that that worry me because when it, if it does come um if times do come where we can't get things from our stores those are the folks that are going to be hurting not the people that have prepared so today i just want to go over a few things with y'all to tell you what i do um to be prepared and i'll be completely honest with you i don't know i do think some shortages are coming because there's going to be a major corn shortage this year i'll try to put some links in the description to some different articles and things because fertilizer prices have went up three and four times and if you've ever grown corn corn's real hard to grow without fertilizer and liquid nitrogen okay corn is what feeds the beef the chicken the pork that you buy at the grocery store they, all that corn they grow out west most of it goes to animal feed and then the rest goes to our food products okay if you're at the grocery store and you pick up any just about any processed food even like things like makeup and stuff like that it's got corn in it in some way shape or form it's got some kind of corn in it so um the corn shortage does worry me a little bit because those farmers out there they ain't gonna it's not gonna be profitable profitable excuse me <laughs> for them to plant corn this year that um with fertilizer going up that much i mean they if they plant corn they're digging their own grave okay they, they're putting their self in the hole and nobody's going to do that to their family everybody's got families to feed um so that's just that's one thing to think about but in my opinion i do think some shortages are coming but i think what's going to hurt us the worst will be the prices that's just my personal opinion um but i think things are going to get so high that it's going to be hard to afford to go to the grocery store because even myself i go every other week um to buy snacks and things like that um y'all saw my previous video about the things i had bought at the grocery store the other day i had 10 bags 10 grocery bags and um a jug of orange juice plus 10 grocery bags pay, um, plastic bags i come out of there for 170 dollars now granted y'all remember i don't buy meat i don't buy any meat i can't tell you the last time that i bought meat at the grocery store um it's been at least two to three years ago i don't buy meat i don't really i don't buy any vegetables and it's still like i feel like it it's hurting and i i'm sorry for y'all that do have to go through that and these prices right now um you know your trucks that are bringing in your stuff they, these trucks they had it's costing over a thousand dollars to fill up these semi trucks now these little these private haulers I don't know how they're going to be able to if it would be cheaper for them to sit their butts at home than to be out here hauling food for us okay 
and I'm very thankful for the truckers, very, very thankful, um, because our country would crumble without them. But if fuel keeps going the way that it is, everything's going to go up. Not, I mean, and then, like I said, with the fertilizer and everything else, I'm scared that it's going to get to the point, not necessarily a food shortage, but it's going to get to the point that you can't afford it. So let's talk about some things. I hope I don't bore you too much. Like I said, it's going to be a little different than normal. Things that you can do right now. Um, I know this is already affecting a lot of people, but um, while we still can, let's let's try to be prepared for some stuff, okay? Now, I'm going to recommend you do what you can, but I want you to try to have at least a year's worth of stuff, okay? Now... Look at more into buying ingredients more than individual things, okay? There's a lot you can make with some flour, eggs, flour and eggs. You know, if you got some other stuff to add to it, you can do a lot with flour and eggs. Um, but these buckets, tractor supply buckets are all food grade buckets, okay? These uh, five gallon buckets and plus they sell these gamma lids. Now this is my dry storage. That's what I like to keep my dry stuff in. Um, now it's not an indefinite shelf life, so I do, you know, dip into this. This is not something that I'm putting up for 30 years, but I do buy my flour and my salt and everything in bulk. Um, I also store my wheat berries in these too for, um, when we do use our little hand grinder. So go to Trash Supply, get you some five gallon buckets, okay? that they are food grade and I'm trying to think Rule King has some food grade buckets I bought a few from there and let me think seemed like there was somewhere else if you know where else to get food grade buckets I mean they're not a bad price uh, let me know in the comments you just have to look they'll have a stamp on them let's see all of them have a stamp on them food grade heavy duty BPA free so they're safe to store food in okay um, so just look for that stamp wherever you're at if you're buying buckets. Now this is my salt. I like to buy Redmond's Real Salt. You've heard me talk about that in my videos as well. Well, you can get 10 pounds of Redmond's Real Salt and it already comes in this little bucket there. That salt can be used for curing, for canning, for cooking. So, I mean, it can be used for anything and I do use it for all three things. Hadn't had any problem with it. So, that's the first thing I want you to do. Now, buying bulk dry goods can be kind of hard to find but i do know that um my local lowe's foods i do like shopping at lowe's foods because they do source a lot of stuff locally um they sell these 25 pound bags of flour okay now that right there has been lasting me a little less than a year um which i don't use a ton of self-rising flour and this is not organic or anything, but it does come from a local meal that's about two hours away. So I do like to buy this. And like I said, you can buy salt. They have bulk salt at Lowe's Foods too. Um, so I've got the Redmond's Real Salt, but before I found this, I also uh, found like a 10 pound bag of just non-iodized plain salt. Um, so I've got that in one of these buckets too. So something else I want you to think about is, um, you know, you, gardening okay if you are somewhere that you can grow a garden go ahead and get that started i know it's kind of jumping in head first but you can container garden you can go out there and dig you up a spot if you know somebody with a tractor or you got a tractor uh you know what better way to do it than just bite the bullet and do it at least you have some control over your food okay if you do that now canning i love to can because it is shelf stable i have recently gotten a propane stove i also have some propane burners outside now i know that you will eventually run out of propane i realize that but in the event of a power outage i can still have something to cook on and can on until i do run out of propane and then at that point, we would just move to the fire. Um, but the canned food, like I said, it's already cooked. So if worse come to worse, you, you've got it there. Okay. And the shelf, the shelf life 
is as long as that seal keeps. Okay, I've eaten green beans that are five years old, and I'm still here to tell about it. Um, you know, as long as you do it with the right process, they look right, they smell right, they taste right, they're fine. All right, um, a lot of people talk about these freeze dryers. If anybody um, on the channel or watches this video has a freeze dryer, I'd like to hear your um, input about them. I personally have not seen it worth the investment right now. Uh, they are super expensive, and of course they do make your food like last 30 years, but um, they are very expensive, kind of bulky. My house is tiny. I don't have a lot of room. <laughs> um, so I want to hear about the freeze dryers, but that's something else you can do, dehydrating. Now, if we don't have power and we need to dehydrate something, you can always dehydrate it out in the sun. Now, you have to bring it in if it's going to rain, but you can... Um, dry things out in the sun to preserve your food and y'all don't forget your local farmers now i'm not just saying this because i'm somebody that provides things for the community or me and my husband but us little people i'm just gonna tell you it's making me a little nervous this year okay i'm not gonna lie um because we gotta feed we gotta feed the animals so just remember to support your local farmers because when the grocery store, if things get bad at the grocery store, you may still have Bob down the road that you can get eggs and maybe some beef, little chicken, you know, stuff from. So, um, but just remember your, your local farmers depend on you as the customers to keep them, keep them in business. Um, because it ain't free, you know, I hate to put it that way, but it's not. Um, but I just, I'm not trying to scare anybody. I don't, I think we all need a little fear in the back of our mind, just a little. Um, but I'm not on here trying to be preachy. I just want you to be ready. I just want you, I want you to be ready for what possibly could come. You ever heard the say, saying, prepare for the worst and hope for the best? That's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> okay. Um. And, but you can't do it all. That's the thing, like I had said in another video, don't feel like you can do it all, but get to know your folks around you. Let's see, um, water. Let's talk about water for a little bit. Now here where I am, we got a big old creek down here, springs everywhere. So I personally am not concerned about water. Of course, if we were to drink it out of that, we would boil, you'd have to boil it first before it'd be safe to drink. Or you could get a water filter. There's some that like are made like a straw, but I've never used one. They're made like a giant straw, and you just put it straight in the water and drink from the water. Um, but these places that don't have a lot of water, don't store your water in milk jugs to drink, okay? That's the one thing I can tell you. Now, if you're going to use it for flushing the toilet, washing clothes, whatever, that's fine. But those milk jugs break down over time and that water is going to be nothing but plastic chemicals if you store it in milk jugs so you can buy these like blue water containers and those are safe to store your water in um i don't know if rural king has them or not somebody let me know in the comments where you might find one of those or i'll look amazon probably has them um, but that's something else to think about. Um, all this stuff from Amazon and everything. I mean, all that depends on fuel and the fuel prices are just out the darn roof right now. Um, but make sure you are pinpointing you a water source in case you were to ever need it. Okay. Um, or what you're going to do about water because you can live a whole lot longer without food than you can without water. So the first priority on anybody's list should be water. Um, so make sure some of the stuff that you're storing is got some caloric and nutritional value. Um, like I said, flour, some flour, eggs, and salt, vegetables, and a little bit of meat you can throw together a heck of a good meal. Um, ingredients are usually easier to find than whole products. Like I know at the grocery store, my little girl loves chicken nuggets. Y'all, I can't tell you the last time I saw chicken nuggets at Food Line. 
because I do go to Food Line sometimes too. I know I said Lowe's a while ago, but I can't find them there either. But I went to Food Line the last time I went to the grocery store, and they didn't have. I ain't. I don't know the last time I saw chicken nuggets and frozen pizzas. Now I know all that section is closed down, but guess what, y'all? Homemade pizza ain't hard to make. Maybe I'll make it one day for y'all. I don't think I've ever made a video about that. Um, but just be on the lookout. Don't be blind. Don't, like I said, prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Bartering items. So something else you need to think about is if it ever come to the time where you couldn't get what you needed at the grocery store, money's tight, or money may not be worth anything, if that ever got to that point, because our dollar is losing its value in a hurry, um, get some bartering items. Like, I'll tell you a good one. A good something to have on hand is alcohol. Um, especially the high proof alcohol because that can be used as a bartering item. That can be used as um, a sterilizer. Like if you need to sterilize needles or um, any kind of equipment, it can sterilize um, wounds. It can like clean out wounds and kill any bacteria, hopefully prevent infection and in wounds. Um, of course, people drink it. Um, I'm trying to think. Tinctures, to make your tinctures with your herbs. So make friends with the good old boy up in the holler <laughs> to get you some of that high powered alcohol or uh, some high power, you know, the high proof vodka um, at the ABC store works too. But that's an excellent bartering item to have. Uh, and so is tobacco. So um, if that's something you want to stock up on, you know, you could have some tobacco put up as a bartering item if it ever did come to that. Now, the way that I'm going to look at it is, you know, we'll trade as long as you can bring me something I don't already have or bring me a skill that I don't have. And that's the only way that's going to work if it ever came down to that. Now, a lot of you know that I have um, my milk cow now, and we are about a week and a half fresh. Um, so, I'm learning and she's learning. But let me tell you something good about a milk cow. Now, a milk cow is not for everybody. It is a commitment. Um, I want to eventually, once I get better at it, do a video about that. But a cow can live off of grass. She don't have to have corn if you got enough grass, okay? Uh, a grass and hay. Hay is a big one. Now, it would be pushing it. She'd probably fall off a little bit, but technically a cow doesn't have to have corn. Now, your chickens and your hogs, they got to have feed. They can't get everything they could ever need from grass or from being out in the woods. Even free-range chickens, like, they won't make it. They, they have got to have feed, okay? They've got to have a source of protein because they are omnivores. A cow is a herbivore, so it can live off of plants. But chickens and pigs are omnivores, so they've got to have some source of protein to be healthy. So your milk cow. You get your milk from your cow. Your cow turns grass into milk, okay? Well, the extra milk or the whey from the milk... Um, that can be fed to pigs and chickens to keep them going if times ever got that hard, okay? They can get their protein from that milk. You got your bull, cow has a calf, you let the calf grow up, eat the calf, and just continue that process over. And you've got a sustainable source of protein because that milk is good for so many things. Um... And then the offspring are your meat that you eat. So that's something, I mean, I know that's a long stretch for a lot of people, but it's something to think about, right? Something to think about. Um, but of course, all this stuff that I'm telling you, it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. 
but I just don't want you to be blindsided. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to come on here and I had to just get it off my chest. I don't want to just be keep cooking my little food and act like everything's all right. <laughs> um, which I mean, I don't think it's got bad yet, y'all. I pray that it never does. But if it does, be ready, okay? Be ready. So, anyways, speaking of milking cows, it's about that time. I got to head down there. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I didn't bore you too much. I just wanted to talk to you about those few little things. And I hope, you, hope it helped you today. And people say, well, God will take care of me. God will take care of me. You know what? God will take care of us. He is so good. God's good. But I believe that God gave us the skills to take care of ourselves. Okay? God gave us the skills to grow a garden. God gave us these animals here for us to raise and eat. This is the way I feel about it. People may disagree. If you do, I'm sorry. Um, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But that is my opinion. He's not going to just hand us stuff, y'all. We're going to have to work for it, okay? He gives us the skills to work for it to take care of ourselves. So I'm going to leave y'all today with a challenge, okay? Every time you go to the grocery store, I want you to buy 10 extra cans of whatever it is you normally buy. You usually buy a can of green beans, buy 10 cans of green beans. Or, you know, just 10 extra of something and a big bag of rice or a big bag of beans. Every time you go to the grocery store, okay? You'll be surprised at how quickly things add up. Um, those are just some little things that you can do. And those canned meats, like the canned chicken and stuff, um, spam, as bad as I hate to say it, it's better than nothing, has just pretty much an indefinite shelf life. So if that's some things you want to put up to have, I challenge you to do that today, okay? So y'all let me know in the comments what y'all are doing um, to get prepared, how life has changed for you since last year, um, things you're going to do different this year. Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So that's all I have for you today. I hope I didn't bore you too bad. Um, if I offended you, I'm very sorry. Um, but it needed to be said. And anyways, I'll catch y'all next time.